Christ Jesus has triumphed o'er Satan and death, and now praise his name, I am free. Although he has gone to his father's right hand, may others see Jesus in me. Greetings, friends. This is Pastor R. Norheim presenting the Gospel in Sermon and Song, sponsored by the Lutheran Gospel Out Association, Pasadena, California, released on a special network of selected radio stations in the United States, Canada, and overseas, maintained by the prayerful, free will, tax-deductible gifts of listeners. When we hear people expressing their appraisal of someone or something, the extremes are no good, pretty good, very good, or extra good. Altogether lovely if it's only our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Together, lovely, the fairest of ten thousand to my soul, we say with King Solomon, truly thou art this to us. For we were once without God, without hope, without anything of security of the future. But now, finding all in thee, we adore thee, we worship thee, for thou art true God, together with Father and Holy Spirit. And we bow in thy presence. We behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Grant that many may join us this hour who have never done so before, and also say, Thou, Lord Jesus, art altogether lovely. We ask it in thy precious name. Amen. The Olaf Bergs from Dallas, Wisconsin, often visited our Pasadena church when they um, spent a part of their winter vacation with their daughter and family here. We sang together Search Me, O God, as a duet number one Sunday morning, which was also tape-recorded. And I'm including this on today's broadcast, especially for our Wisconsin listeners. Oh. 
praise thee, Lord, for cleansing me from sin. Fulfill thy word and make me pure within. Fill me with fire where once I burned with sin. For the second time, Mrs. Norheim and I sing The Garden of My Heart. You may have a free copy of Words and Music if you request it. Ask for the song of the month, The Garden of My Heart, and send your letter to Lutheran Gospel Hour, Post Office Box 1, 2, Pasadena, California. In Canada, write to the Lutheran Gospel Hour, Post Office Box 201, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan.
are you busier than usual this month? You wonder why I ask that question. Maybe you have an idea. Yes? You remember that you've been too busy to write to the Lutheran Gospel Hour. Canadian friends seem to be just as busy as people down here in the States. If the office workers at the radio stations forgot to write us and to enclose their monthly bill, we wouldn't mind, would we? But that just doesn't happen. Well, really, it's very important, as you know, because every summer so many who regularly contribute become too occupied to get that letter sent. To save time, omit the letter or note this time. Just put your check in the envelope and drop it in the mailbox and you'll cause us to smile. The mailing address, remember, is Lutheran Gospel Hour, Post Office Box 12, Pasadena, California. In Canada, Lutheran Gospel Hour, Box 201, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. And if you missed that, here it is. Lutheran Gospel Hour, Box 1-2, Pasadena, California. In Canada, Lutheran Gospel Hour, Box 201, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. The required zip code in Canada is 7SK3K4. Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, verses 21 to 27, we read, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall thereof. We are all builders. We all have a house which we are building, and that house is not a temple of wood or stone. It is our own life. No one else can build it for us. I cannot let it out or contract the building of this house. No priest, no pastor. No professor can build my life. All of them can supply me with materials, good or bad, but I can accept or reject as I choose. And therefore, uh, I cannot be justified if my life is a failure. 
in blaming somebody else. My life is in my hands. I can and must decide my own eternal destiny. Paul informs us in 1 Corinthians 3 how we are to begin. A sure foundation comes first, and so he proclaims after trying several false foundations, for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. According to the grace of God which is given unto me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. Two things were essential in Paul's estimation, and his estimation harmonized with God's, of course. First, a sure, solid foundation. And secondly, accurate, dependable, sane building upon that foundation. Let us consider the first, but today, uh, which is essential, a sure foundation. I cannot emphasize too strongly the importance of a sure foundation for your life. When we see hundreds of lives wrecked in the storms of life, people living lives of sin and shame, homes broken by divorce, proceedings, children's minds filled with fear, hatred, and evil examples, when civilization is crumbling exactly the way history reveals the downfall of old Rome, then I say it's important that a nation sinking in the quicksands of sin and corruption Hear and heed the words of Jesus Christ. Whosoever heareth these words of mine and doeth them shall be likened unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. From personal experience I can testify today that I too once built my life on sinking sand. I ignored God's word about sin and grace. I went about building according to the dictates of my own evil, wicked heart. I thought that morality good behavior, and good works would make a splendid foundation for my life. But I thank the Lord for the storm that he sent into my young life when my house began to weaken and at last fell all to pieces. The storm, if I may use the picture of our text, came to its height during a week of evangelistic meetings in uh, Emmanuel Lutheran Church near Maddox, North Dakota, when Evangelist Enoch Scottwald from Camrose, Alberta, preached sin and grace in the power of the Holy Spirit, and I saw myself as a poor, lost, condemned creature, worthy of nothing but eternal hellfire. The storm broke loose in all its fury, and the law demanded that I keep the whole law or be forever lost. And then I tell you, the best that I could do was not good enough. God demanded more than my best. He demanded that I love the Lord my God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my strength, and love my neighbor as myself. And that was, of course, utterly impossible. Instead of producing more, I fell more and more short of the glory of God until the law of God had laid my house level with the ground. I was hopelessly lost. But then the evangelist pointed to a foundation which was already laid, which I could have free. Only by confessing my lost condition and by accepting God's provision. And so I came, like the prodigal son, and I accepted a new life made ready for me by the Lord Jesus Christ. The foundation, you know, was laid at Calvary when Jesus cried, It is finished. And I came along almost 1900 years afterwards, and I came to rest upon the finished work of Christ. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. And now as we have for many years proclaimed to our large radio audiences that what every one of you need more than anything else is to move from your false man-made foundations onto the finished work of Jesus Christ, it is our hope and prayer that many, many have been uh, led from darkness to light, from sinking sand to a saving faith in the eternal rock of ages, Christ Jesus. If only one soul has been saved through our radio ministry, all the money and time invested would be well spent. And if you, dear listeners, should be that one soul, if your life is built on your work instead of Christ, if you are led by the Holy Spirit to give up, saving your soul by good works right now, then, friend, let me urge you upon the necessity of making no delay. 
Unless you let the storm of God's demands break down your false hopes, there will come at last the final storm of God's wrath, when uh, great shall be the fall of body and soul for time and eternity, when no further opportunity will be given to rebuild your life, when the eternal judge shall commit your soul and body to eternal torments away from his presence, then, my friend, it will be too late. But today, when you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Turn ye, turn ye, for why will ye die? In Acts 26, Paul tells us about one who was near the kingdom of God. He was almost persuaded to become a Christian, but he did not permit the Holy Spirit's work to continue. And so, none other than King Agrippa took a chance on the one thing in which every chance taker loses. He delayed moving, and Holy Scripture remains silent about the question no man can answer, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation. You must have Christ as your foundation, or you'll have no foundation at all. All else shall fail you. Jesus never fails. I feel so sorry for the multitudes of today who are so much like those in the days of Jesus, upon whom Jesus had compassion, for they were a sheep without a shepherd. So many are uneasy, dissatisfied. Their hearts are longing for Jesus, though not everyone understands their own heart cry. How my heart goes out to you, dear unhappy soul, today. You want peace and joy through sin's forgiveness. Then, friend, do not delay. Give yourself to Jesus just the way you are. Come and tell Jesus. He understands. He's right there beside you as you're sitting by your radio or wherever you might be. Why not get down on your knees, if that's possible? Bow your head and surrender your heart and life to Christ. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Years have sped by so fast since I became a Christian, and I never dreamed at that time it would be my glorious opportunity to be presenting the gospel in sermon and song for, lo, these many years on an increasing number of radio stations, both in the United States and Canada and overseas. No, I didn't know it. You young person there by sitting listening by the radio, you don't know what God has planned for you, but he does. And you could be one of his ministers of the grace of God in some form of ministry, whether it be at home or abroad. The mission fields need missionaries. We need pastors, evangelists. Don't forget evangelists. We need more of them. Over in Norway's lands, they have as many as 2,000 evangelists traveling fall, winter, and spring, and some of them right through the summer as well. <laughs> when a little country like Norway can produce thousands of evangelists, it's about time we begin to take a look at our work. What are we doing? Training men specializing in certain areas. Oh, a lot of specialists. But I wonder how many are specializing in evangelizing, getting the Word of God out. We need laymen as well as those that are, are trained and ordained. And so we pray, you dear young people, be sure that you build on that foundation, Jesus Christ, and then ask now, Lord, how shall I build my life? What do you have in mind for me, that I may be what you want me to be and go where you want me to go? Would you pray with me as I sing a song of prayer, light of life, so softly shining from the cross of Calvary, never fading, never reclining. Shine on me, oh, shine on me. Light of life, so softly shining from the cross of Calvary. of life, oh shine on me, with the love of Jesus beaming, light of life, shine on me, light of life that knows 
is no changing, though all else shall pass away, thou the living word incarnate, shine on me, oh shine on me, let the light of a holy scripture fill my heart, so I may see all my sin and all thy mercy shine on me oh shine on me shine on me oh shine on me light of life oh shine on me with the love Jesus be